In this video, I wanna talk about how we can start to customize the look of our platform. Right now, it's pretty placeholder-y, but I wanna show you that you have the option to bring in custom models if you want. And just like we did in the previous video, we can do this through a component. We don't really need to do the hot swapping through blueprints. I wanted to do that for the initial go around just to show you that you have full control over everything, but I think it's better modularity to use components where it's appropriate and use variables for specific customization. In this case, all I wanna do, my static mesh is still pulling from this 400 by 400. We can potentially use a different model and you can bring in your own actually. I'm going to minimize some of these. And let's say instead of a floor, so make sure you click on static mesh, maybe you want something different. So if I kinda scroll through here a little bit, might find something like a like a torus or a shape. If I click that, you can see how it's a little donut. Some things like this may not make sense for a moving platform. So I would try to make sure that whatever model you want to use does make sense. Um, so you can browse around these for a little bit. And I found this one called Asset Platform. And this might be something that uh, looks just a little bit better. And maybe maybe we need a smaller platform for this particular one. Now, one thing you'll notice is that it offsets some of our components, and we're gonna fix that in a second. I also wanna show you, let's, let's show that you can have different meshes in your scene. So in this one, do static mesh. Using the starter content, maybe I find the, uh, the lamp might work, maybe the table round. And you'll see what it's doing. It's actually putting the static mesh according to the pivot of the actor. So this is one thing, that you need to watch out for. If you are bringing in different static meshes that you wanna swap out for this, that it will position it around the pivot point of your actor. And that means you have to be aware of the pivot point of the static meshes you're bringing in. You can always you know, move these around accordingly and you can readjust if you need to. It just makes things a little bit simpler if you don't have to do that. So the first thing we're noticing is that when we change our static mesh this is a smaller object, but our components that we placed earlier are no longer in the right position. So we have a couple different options here. Um, for me, I think one quick way to fix this issue is to change it in the blueprint. Up to now, having them in the center of the platform was fine for testing, but I think in general, let's move it over the pivot and then we can customize it further if we want to do that for an individual instance. So inside of my blueprint, across all of my platforms, I'm just gonna reposition the looping audio and the looping particle to be pretty close to the scene root. So on my looping audio, I'm gonna click that and I'm going to zero out the locations. I'm just hitting tab to go to the next one and then enter. And if you just zero that out, you know, maybe we can pull it down just a little bit, I think would make sense. And we're gonna do the same thing to our looping particle. And we're just looking for a good default. The designer ha still has control to customize these, compile, save. But if I come back to my scene, you'll see that it fixed it for all the instances of my platform. And I don't really wanna do that for each one. And you'll also notice it's zeroing it out according to the static mesh, right? So in this case, we may want to zero out the static mesh. Okay, and that'll fix that, not a big deal. But now we can move these around and it's a little closer to what it needs to be, right? So this platform may be right there. This platform, we'll move this over a little bit. Just to show you, you don't need a perfect asset for every single level design thing you wanna do. In this case, I like the general look of my table. Maybe we can scale and stretch this out a little bit to make it look closer to what we want you have the ability to reposition individual components just like we did with our looping particle and looping audio. I'm going to change the scale of my static mesh for this instance to be, um, let's try three. Sometimes tab doesn't work. Three, and, and that's too big. So maybe I like the XY, but I, I wanna crush down the vertical a little bit. So we'll try 0.5. And I think that actually looks really good. At this point, it looks sort of like a sci-fi platform. So if I move this up a little bit, 
Now, this kind of looks like a place where particles may come from. So now I can reposition my looping audio to be a little closer towards the center. Same thing with my looping particle. Maybe I want it to look like it's coming out of the center right there. And remember that for a looping particle, we can set this to be sparks, and this is gonna be the looping particle that we use, and this is where it's gonna come from. Same thing with the looping audio. Just make sure you have something there. I have light O2Q, that's fine. And now we can pull this down. Make sure that your static mesh is zeroed out. Oh, not nine. So now we can reposition this out. I wanna make sure that this one over here is as well. Uh, the static mesh component specifically. The default route, we're gonna use this for placement. So I think that's, we would want this to be according to the world. Okay, so now we have our platform. So we're gonna to toggle this one. It's gonna go up and it's gonna stop. Cool. And we can preemptively stop it there. You know, the explosion's a little intense, but I do think it gets the point across and you could always have a sound designer now come in and give a custom engine startup sound and then you play the looping engine running sound and then a custom engine stop sound. You have a little bit more control over each instance. But now I have a platform that I can customize the visuals for throughout my level. Now, the last thing we need to do is you may be wondering, if I hit play, you can see I can jump on top of this platform. You may be wondering where that collision is coming from. And if you decide to use other assets, I do think it's worth mentioning. Click my platform, I go to Static Mesh, and you click this button, Browse to Static Mesh underscore table round. This lets you quickly find a Static Mesh that you're referencing inside of your Details panel. You'll see it'll highlight it. If you open up the Static Mesh asset, like this, you have the ability to customize this asset. And one thing you can do to customize this asset is add collision onto it, which means every single time this asset is used inside the scene, it's going to pull the collision that is defined inside of the static mesh. So if you wanna see what that looks like, if you click on the collision button and you go to simple collision, this is the collision that has been either custom built or generated through this editor for this model, and you can look up other tutorials on how to do that. But this is the collision volume for this asset, so that whenever we, you know, if we did something to it, if we come back here and we click this asset, this is where it's pulling the collision from, and it is still scaling that collision appropriately. So if you're a little confused on where that's coming from, um, you know, you could technically replace a moving platform with a chair or a bench or something and do something with that. And you could open any of these up and look at the collision attached to it. So just be aware of that and just to let you know where that's coming from and, and show you how everything is connected. But now we can customize the visuals of the platform for our level and we can start to make variation inside of our levels using this more modular blueprint that we can customize individually if we want to.